As many of you know, I have been declaring for decades that the mark of the beast is the Sunday Sabbath invented by Rome. And I have both historic and scriptural evidence to back this up online. In fact, I have shown for years that every prophecy that has ever been written in Scripture that speaks about the Antichrist beast system have been fulfilled by the popes of Rome. I have 26 of my favorite prophecies confirming all this listed here. But to keep this short, I will only share one of those prophecies that is in fact my all-time favorite that makes it very easy for me to share this truth in a very quick manner. It has to do with the prophecy found in Revelation 17.8 that says, Behold, the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. No other prophecy makes it that easy to show how accurate Christian prophecy is. And after you see how easy this is to share, you too may use this when asked how you know for a fact that the Vatican is in fact the prophesied beast system. But first, notice these historic facts so as to better understand the prophecy. And just so you know, this is just one prophecy locking it down like this. I have many more listed all over my main website. The Catholic Church first gained its political and religious power when Vigilus ascended the papal chair in 538 AD under the military protection of Alsarius. You can find that in the History of the Christian Church, Volume 3, page 327. Now, during this time, and as prophesied, the Vatican went about killing Christians for 1,260 years. As I stated in many studies and sermons and videos, that period of time is what the prophet Daniel and the prophet John predicted in their books, and Jesus himself called the Great Tribulation in Matthew 24, 21. But for the prophecy to be accurate, we have to see something drastic happening at the end of the 1,260 years to where the beast system is to lose its power. That would be the exact year of 1798 A.D., and in the Encyclopedia Britannica 1941 edition, as well as many other historic sources, it was confirmed that in 1798, General Berthier made his entrance into Rome, abolished the papal government, and established a secular one. If you do a proper study, you will find this was also prophesied as the time the beast received its mortal wound. And according to prophecy, that wound would eventually be healed, and so do we find any moment in time where the wound was beginning to heal and the beast system came back into political and religious power. Notice, too, of many articles posted back in 1929. Headline, Mussolini and Cardo Gaspari sign historic Roman pact. And it says, The Roman question tonight was a thing of the past, and the Vatican was at peace with Italy in affixing the autographs to the memorable document, Healing the Wound of Many Years, Extreme cordiality was displayed on both sides. That's, of course, in the San Francisco Chronicle, February 11th, 1929. And then the next headline says, Pope becomes ruler of a state again. Because remember, Napoleon sent in Berthier, and he lost his political power. He's only a church now. It says, from 11 o'clock this morning, there was another sovereign independent state in the world. At that time, Premier Mussolini, an Italian foreign minister representing King Victor Emmanuel, the first Italian premier ever to cross the threshold of the Vatican, exchanged with Cardinal Gaspari, Papal Secretary of State, representing Pope Pius XI, ratifications of the treaties signed in the Lateran Palace on February 11th. By that simple act, the sovereign independent state of Vatican City came into existence, and that was posted in the New York Times, July 7th, 1929. And so getting back to my favorite prophecy exposing the beast system, notice what it says in Revelation 17, 8 again. It said, Behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Well, the beast that was was the Roman Catholic Church becoming a church and state in 538 AD and continued as such until Napoleon sent in General Berthier in 1798. And then the beast that is not is the time span from 1798 AD forward that the popes had no political power as an independent state. Its power was literally non-existent during this time. And then the beast that yet is, is from the signing of that document in 1929 to present day. From that day forward, the Roman Catholic Church was again a church and a state. Now, in order to figure out what the Antichrist's beast system will declare as its mark, we need to find out what the seal of God or the mark of God is, because as we know, Satan always uses God's law as a way to both mock him, as well as seek counterfeit worship by claiming to be a God on earth. Well, that being said, have you ever signed a document to validate or confirm that that document is authentic? Have you ever given your seal of approval on something? Have you ever marked an item of yours as proof of ownership? 
Well, in government, this is an undeniable fact of life. As we know, signing a document actually authenticates that document. Government declarations always bear a mark or an official seal of approval. But what are the actual features of an official mark or seal made by government bodies? Well, they must have three distinct features. Number one, they must have the name of the official signing it. Number two, the title of the official signing it. And then number three, the territory of that same official. So when the President of the United States signs a bill into law, he must sign it, number one, name, George Washington, for example. Number two, title, well, of course, President, and his territory would have been the United States of America. So collectively, his signature would read, George Washington, President of the United States. Now, looking to the Creator God, we realize that he does, in fact, have a heavenly kingdom in New Jerusalem, and that is where Satan will always seek to mock him. And the kingdom always has a governing body, as we know. The Almighty also has a legal document containing his law for his kingdom. The Lord's legal document is, in fact, his law, or the Ten Commandments, as we call it. And so, looking directly into the midst of these Ten Commandments, you will find the seal of the living God. Within the fourth commandment, we find the words, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. That's Exodus 20, verse 11. So, in that passage, we see all the necessary features of an official seal. Because notice, you got to have name, title, and territory, right? Well, the name is the Lord. Because it says in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. His title, well, creator. Because it also said the Lord made heaven and earth in that verse. And his territory, well, of course, heaven and earth. Because it said heaven and earth. So collectively, his signature reads, the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. And so now that we know that the seal of God is in fact the fourth commandment that declares him to be creator, and by keeping his Sabbath, you acknowledge him as creator by declaring after he finished creating all things, he rested and made that day holy as an eternal reminder that he is in fact creator God. I mean, after all, is it not written in Psalm 77, 11, that I will remember the works of the Lord? Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I mean, it's pretty old, right? That's when everything started. And how can we remember him in ways that declare him creator? Well, the fourth commandment literally starts out with, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Seeing how Satan, via his beast system, demands worship, as well as a way to mock the Lord, does he have his own Sabbath? And does he too declare his Sabbath to be his seal or his mark? Well, I'm going to let the prelates of Rome, the Vatican itself, who is under the leadership of the man of sin, as prophecy calls him, and one that worships Satan openly in the Vatican to the point he even makes buildings dedicated unto him, I'm going to let him answer that question. And so what has Rome openly declared to be their official mark in writing? Check it out. It says, of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change, and that change being Saturday, Sabbath, or Sunday, was her act. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious things. And then they also say, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Thank you for watching. God bless.